Check out this building by MVRDV. It's a huge cantilever floating above the ground. Gravity means nothing to these architects. They even put a swing underneath and a window in the floor to look at the ground. Why is MVRDV flexing all over us? Why not? If you had all this machismo, you'd be flexing all the time, too. Guaranteed. For $500 a night, you can stay in the balancing barn. But if you want to learn how to harness the power of the cantilever for yourself, watch the rest of this video. a break from my workout to talk about how architects flex with cantilevers. Some might see architects as great gladiators fighting against the tyranny of gravity. The endless pull of objects with mass towards the earth is a hard-fought battle of will. Maybe they read some Frederick Nietzsche. Not by wrath, but by laughter do we slay. Come, let us slay the spirit of gravity. I learned to walk. Since then I let myself run. I learned to fly. Since then, I do not need pushing in order to move from a spot. For these architects, the ground is an unnecessary crutch for lesser designers to prop up their substandard buildings with columns and with beams. Instead, these folks demonstrate their mastery of gravity with buildings that seem to float as if being held up by magic. You can't help but be impressed. MVRDB's been flexing all over you since 1997 with Wozoko House. Look at those boxes just hanging out there. Yeah, guess what this building is for? Don't know? It's a retirement community. The people inside can't even leave to check out their precarious situation. The architects claim this is a solution for packing more people into the building while taking up as little land area as possible. Nothing is more impressive than a real long cantilever. There's just something about standing under and looking up of that unsupported structure. I mean, just check it out. How far does this thing stick out, bro? To design this stuff, you have to be able to read diagrams like this. And what this one is telling me is that this wooden box wants to rip itself right off the face of the building. To understand cantilevers and architecture, this video is broken up into five different parts. What cantilevers are, how they work, awesome examples, how to design a cantilever, and expert trainers. First up, what's a cantilever? This is a cantilever. They're a rigid element with one end that is fixed and one end that's free. Boom, done, nailed it. Now that we know what they are, this is how they work. The weight of the cantilevering element combined with the force pushing down tends to bend a cantilever downward. This bending creates what's called stress inside of the member. And I kid you not, they are called members. This is due to how the forces are distributed inside of it. So the top part, you can think of it as wanting it to stretch as it bends, while the lower part wants to kind of shorten. And you can kind of visualize this in the curvature of the piece. The top is said to be in tension, meaning that it's being pulled on, while the bottom is in compression because it's getting squeezed. The maximum length of the member is based on three primary factors. One is the depth of it, so the distance between these compression and tension forces. Another factor is how heavy it is and how much other load that it has to carry. And the final factor that's considered is the kind of material that it's made from, how well this material resists the tension and the compression forces. There's also two forces at the point of connection of the cantilever, or the joint, that we need to worry about. The first is called moment, which is the tendency for this thing to twist right off out of the joint. The other is called shear, which is the tendency for this thing to just fall right off or shear off of its uh, off the wall here. The moment is the big one since it can be quite high in a cantilevering situation. And that and the calculation for the moment has to do with how much load and how far away that load is being carried. Most cantilevers don't work exactly like this one. Most of them have some sort of point of connection further back in the building and then some other maybe like a column holding it up somewhere like right here, and then this would be the cantilevering length. So only a portion of it is freely disconnected from the rest of the member. Enough of the nerdy stuff. Let's get to looking at some cantilevers. Frank Lloyd Wright liked to flex on his clients, the construction industry, and the media with his cantilevers. The cautious contractor for fouling water refused to remove the supporting scaffolding under the cantilevered concrete porches. So Frank Lloyd Wright had to kick him out himself. Or check out this Derek Dangle by Ensemble Studio. It's the hemoscoprit... Who cares? House with the giant cantilever lap pool inside the pre-stressed concrete member. That's a... Max Flex! Water's heavy, but not for Ensemble Studio. 
There are seven stacked elements in total. One of them uses a rock to counterbalance its cantilever corner. It takes a lot of weight to look so light. While we're with Ensemble Studio, let's check out their Cervantes Theater. The theater itself is underground, but the entry canopy is totally badass. Using metal structural panels, it looks really top-heavy. Max Flex! It only touches the ground in a few places. It's because it's made of metal panels, they look real thin. Max Flex! When we view them on the end, so the whole thing looks like it's floating. Richard Rogers balances his building right over a vineyard and only touches the ground in four worst places. Two of those are for cables and pulling the building back down to earth. It hangs 27 meters or 90 feet over the hill. Is it gonna fall on me? Hell no! Thanks, Richard Rogers. Now we get to the big daddy of the lever, Rem Kulhas. He makes buildings stick out with the best of them. First up, we have Milstein Hall, home of the Cornell University School of Architecture, floating right over the road underneath. Kulhas doesn't care if you're intimidated by his cantilever. He's gonna make you drive right under it. Kulhas makes lots of cantilevers, like the CCTV tower. Look at that thing, just look at it. You might think it's gonna topple right over, but no, Kulhas uses his brain to hold it up. Max Flex! Let's use the Richard Rogers building to talk about some of the forces involved in cantilevers. This is a good example because everything is exposed. First, the weight of the building is making it want to fall over. Since it's resting on the corner of the hill, it wants to rotate. The building actually sits on a hinge right here so that it is free to rotate. This ensures that the building isn't imparting any sort of twisting forces or moment anywhere where it shouldn't go and cause cracking in the uh, concrete foundation down here. So the building can pivot around this point and the building wants to fall over. So something has to hold it upright. That's what these cables are for. They're pulling everything down to the earth, which in turn lifts the other end of the building up. The cables are attached at a point that is some distance away from the hinge. So that most of the amount of moment can counteract the weight at the other end. And these cables are pulling the whole building down. And again, the moment is a twisting force and is measured by the force or the weight uh, times the length of the entire member. In order for this whole system to work, the building needs to be very stiff. Otherwise, it would droop down. And this droop is called deflection. And it can be unsightly if the building gets too droopy and the building can get bouncy and that would freak everyone out inside. The formula for how much a building will deflect for a cantilever looks like this, where lambda b is the maximum deflection of b, e is the modulus of elasticity, I is the moment of inertia. It's more complicated than I want to talk about right now, so maybe we should get a trainer or a structural engineer. The rule of thumb that architects learn is that members or trusses shouldn't extend much more than one third of their length as a cantilever. Beyond that, you're gonna need a trainer. All right, here's how you train for cantilevers. Cantilevers don't always come easy, so if you're gonna go for maximum extension, you have to have a trainer, also known as a structural engineer. Structural engineering is a branch of civil engineering, and they work alongside of architects to work out how buildings stand up so that they don't fall over and they don't move enough to be uncomfortable. So while architects will often be credited with being daring about cantilevers, it's really the structural engineers doing a lot of the work. Those sweet displays from Web Coolhouse come from a collaboration in a firm called ERA, and especially an engineer named Cecil Bauman. He's one of the best structural trainers around with multiple books and buildings to his name. He's also taught at three Ivy League schools, so he must know what he's doing. Some other noteworthy trainers include Guy Nordenson and Bureau Happel. No more lazing about. You need to get started training immediately. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like and subscribe to the channel. You might also enjoy a video about fire and architecture or the one about how good architecture leaks. Videos drop every week on Thursday, so stay tuned and I'll catch you next time.